makers, this is going to be a fun, fairly quick process video as I get to talk about this one that showcases Tim Holtz ideology and the new transparent things in lantern form. So let's get started with what you need to make this fairly quick, not too difficult project. And then we'll wrap up at the end with some of the things that I love about it. To make this project, you're going to need a set of the vignette boxes squares. There are three boxes, small, medium, and large. For this project, you are going to need the small box. You are also going to need a fairly new package or complete package of the scallop trims from uh, the Etcetera trims from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. You need eight four inch and eight five inch of the trims for this project. We won't be using any of the six inch and I'm using the thin trims so you will have the thicker trims left over for another project. What I'm going to do is pair these. I'm gonna make frames out of two of the five inch and two of the four inch. I will be using a uh, corner miter snips that I have linked with all the things that you need for this project, even the ones that I add along the way are all linked below in the description and they are also linked on my blog. So I'm gonna be making frames. I only have three pieces here, but I will have uh, two of the four inch top and bottom and two of the five inch side by side. And those are going to frame these beautiful florals from the Transparent Things 2 that is released with the new 2023 ideology from Tim Holtz. And so I'm going to actually frame these. So I'm just setting this on here so that you can see that it will just fit inside. And then those frames are going to be attached to each side of the small vignette box. And then I am going to put some foundations. So these are the foundations feet that you adhere with stress collage medium. And so I'll be using those to make it kind of fancy. Then inside, I'm just gonna be putting a set of the tiny lights that you can just turn it on and off. But once I have the frames up here, I'm going to build out of chipboard I'm going to build a uh, little top for it, and I'm going to use one of the curio knobs to hold it, um, to be able to open and close it. So you'll need one of those. Whatever else I decide to add, I will, as I said, it will be linked in the description for this video, but that's the basics for what you will need. So I have tried to videotape this multiple times. I cannot get the math right. I am so sorry. So I've already messed you up and anyone who knows me knows, please don't let Tammy do the math because I'm inevitably going to mess it up. And something that is just so obvious to the rest of the world, my mind just can't grasp it. And so I apologize. You need eight of the four inch skinny trims and eight of the five inch skinny trims. In each packet, you will only get five because you get 10 four inch trims, but five of those are the wide for each size. Order two packs of the scallop trims so that you definitely have eight of the thin four inch and eight of the thin five inch to do this project. Again, my apologies for not being a math person. And uh, I did get my snips out just so you could uh, see them in case you didn't see how I used them earlier this year. They're new to me. And so I love how they make uh, angled cuts. So I can just do this and I get a 45 degree cut or I do this and I get a 45 degree cut the other way to be able to make my frames. So I really like this little, it's very easy to use. And it's not hard to cut through this pressed board at all. Very easy to cut through it to make my frames. Cut the frame for side one. And I say side one because I have numbered all the sides of this box. So I have one, two, three, and four, and I wrote them inside. And then 
on the back of each piece I wrote, so this is for, for one, and each of these has a number one written on the back of it. So I know when I glue it together that it fits side one. And I say that because each time before you start, you're gonna need to trim the bottom and the top pieces to fit the side. So for sides one and side three, you're going to just trim the tiniest amounts off, and I'm using these. You can use, if you're not getting those and you're just doing the 45 degree on your own, you can just use your um, scissors or your craft knife. But uh, for me, I'm just trimming, trimming, trimming just the littlest bit off to make sure that it goes from edge to edge and there isn't any overhang. Once I get that for the top and bottom, then I go ahead and I start cutting my 45 degree angles so that it will fit perfectly on the box and not hang over. Now, one and three are a whole piece. However, two and four are gonna be in about an eighth of an inch on each side. So that would be a quarter of an inch altogether but that's because we're gonna have these on there. And then, so you can see that these sides are gonna be just a little shorter. And if you made the bird cage or attempted to make the bird cage that I made last year, you'll remember this, that one side is a little, or two sides are a little bit thinner than the other side. So keep that in mind, and that's why I numbered everything, so that the longer frames will go on the longer sides and the shorter frames will go on the shorter sides. I'm gonna go ahead and do this without narration, but now you know I'm going to begin by making sure that these are just as long as the sides, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start my 45 degree cuts, and I am gonna go ahead and use my snips, and. Anytime that I'm using my snips, if you don't have any, again, you can choose to draw your own 45 degree angle and then either use your craft knife or use your tonic snips, okay? So let's get started with that. As you can see at this point I have all four of the frames made they are the same height they are different width just slightly different width for the two shorter sides two and four and so these will fit on two and give just enough room for one and three to meet at the edge before I attach them to the box I'm going to attach them as frames flat because I want them square. And so I'm going to take my time and I am going to follow the squares on here and line them up. And then I'm gonna glue them together and I'm gonna leave them sit overnight and then let them dry. My frames are all dried and ready to adhere onto the box. So the way that I'm gonna do that is this is number four so this is going to go here 
and so this is number two and it's going to go here so i think i'm going to start off adhering these sides and i will add my collage medium and then i'm going to stick this on there so it will hold it in place i have two of those and so I'll put collage medium on both surfaces and then I'm going to go ahead and stick those in place like that. And then as you can see, there's room on each side where these are going to go eventually. And once I get these extras in place, then I'll go ahead and glue the tops and square it up. It will eventually look like that for my lantern. I thought I would show you the update. I decided not to use the clips or any tape because once I started putting on the shorter sides, I realized that they were kind of... Uh, tending to lean in a little bit when I put the clip on. So I decided to just go ahead and put glue along the bottom of the shorter sides, make sure that they were standing up. And then before, obviously, the collage medium dried, I put collage medium on the bottom of the longer sides and then down each inside lip of the longer sides so that when I stuck them on, and push them against the shorter sides, it would glue them all together, and I could square it up all at the same time. So now it just needs to dry. Um, oh, I hope it doesn't fall off, but now it just needs to dry on there. So I'm just gonna let it sit, and I'm gonna work on another project. Little update on this piece. I have all of the sides are well, dried and stuck together, stuck on the box. And now uh, I went ahead and painted the inside white and I painted the edges white. And then I made a lid for it. And so the lid is just four pieces of chipboard and two pieces of chipboard that I glued together with collage medium. And then I held them together with some uh, of these clips. In fact, this corner still needs to be held together a little bit, it looks like. And then, because th this one is four by four, and then the one inside is three and five eighths by three and five eighths, I think. And so it fits, and then see, it doesn't really move. And then I think on the corners, I'm gonna use some of the, I think I have them in here the metal corners and I'll probably use the silver ones let's see one two three four so I'm thinking that to add even more interest to it that won't take away from anything going on down here that I will attach these and you just squeeze these down onto, onto that is how that works. So I think I'm going to go ahead and add those because I think that'll be a nice additional feature. And that's my kitten Exitensio, also named for a Disney Imagineer, like his adopted mom, Leota. So he can open the door to my studio, which he just did and came in and is demanding that I please give him some attention and some kitty treats, right? Yeah. So I think that that will add just the right touch. And with these on the bottom, that'll be enough, you know, kind of decorative to go with it. I have everything just sitting on here right now because I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. I've been looking for some paper that is going to highlight the beautiful transparencies that I basically just kind of taped in there. So you can kind of see them. They're just taped at the top. And then I put some tiny lights in. So you could just kind of get the idea of how this is going to be a lantern. And so I just threw some tiny lights in there. 
but I can't decide what paper to use on this that doesn't take away from the beautiful transparencies. So I'm kind of considering maybe painting the whole thing using some Enlost Shadow, using some Crackle Texture Paste. I'm not sure. And then uh, I will adhere these on the top with the same whatever finish I decide. Attach the handle, the corners here, and then I'll add the legs to the bottom. And I should be pretty much done. My electricity just went off for several minutes and it did come back on, but we're having storming all weekend and have been all week. So I wanna make sure that I get as much documented on video as I can in case it all goes off again and I have to finish this stuff in the dark. So for my lantern, I went ahead and covered the whole thing with kind of a, I guess a primer coat of picket fence because I have a whole bunch of this. And so I figured that would be the best thing to do. So I covered the whole thing inside it out with white picket fence and then um, as well as the lid and then I went over it with one layer of lost shadow so far it's still drying and you can see that the lost shadow didn't completely cover everything yet so it's kind of soaked in here the chipboard is getting covered a little bit better and uh, you can see on the lid that the it has covered it better. I did not do the underside. I'm letting the top dry first. So I'm gonna go ahead and do at least, uh, at least one more, if not two more coats of the Lost Shadow on the outside of the lantern. I'm also considering kind of beating it up a little bit all over with the texture hammer. I think that would kind of look good, but I'm afraid I'm gonna break it. So I'm not sure, I probably should have done that or thought of this before, but I thought it might give it some kind of cool, you know, weathered texture. Um, so I'm considering that as well, and I probably need to do it before my last coat of Lost Shadow paint, and I really think it'll look good on this uh, lid. So that's where I'm at with the lantern and the paint. The frame on the lantern has been completely painted and then I decided to add a little detail along where the frame meets the box. And so I just took a strip of chipboard that I cut and then I just put some of the Gilded Foundry Wax on it and uh, heat embossed it or heated it, whatever, to make it gilded. And then put a little bit of, uh, let's see, it was Grand Espresso Distress Crayon over it to make it look a little bit uh, aged. And then I just glued that on with Distress uh, Collage Medium. And then I put the feet on. And as you can see, I also went over the feet with Gilded. I haven't gone over them with anything else yet because I went with the gold corners and so that it would match my little curio here. So everything's kind of gilded. Um, so I put these on and then and just kind of checking them out on here. And then I decided that I wanted the um, details to be at the, at the center and then one inch out. And of course not on the corners. So I picked out 12 of the large fasteners, just put them through some chipboard. I pounded them with my little, uh, I'm not sure what this is called yet, the uh, distress hammer maybe. Um, so anyway, I pounded those and then put some founded, uh, gilded foundry wax on those and then used my Dremel to drill holes in all four sides. So I'm gonna be taking these off and attaching them through. I don't know how far that they will go through. Let's just see. I figured if they didn't go all the way through that I would be able to. Okay, so if I get, yeah, that's fine. Close enough. All right, so that is just a little bit. And then it also gives you the chance to move it up should you need to, and then press it down once you get it. 
So I think that's cute. It adds just a little bit of interest and a little bit of detail before I go over the whole thing with some distressed crayon. So I will be going over the whole thing. And I do think I would point out that I should have done this before. So if you're making this, do this before you make the frames and probably even before you cut them, um, is go through and pound on all of them and the box with the distress hammer. So it makes the whole thing look like it's distressed. I did that afterwards and then I had to go back through and re-glue some of the corners on the frames. So that didn't work too well. And this side hardly even looks like it got uh, dinged up. So anyway, that's kind of what you want to do is just, you just pound on it with both ends. You can see that I have some of the, from the flat side and some from the little uh, rounded side. So that's how you do that. Uh, I also drilled holes. I have never done this before, but there are holes in the bottom of these. And so I decided I'm going to use some uh, long fasteners probably and just uh, add collage glue because I've already glued these on and it didn't stick. So I'm going to go ahead and re-add the collage glue to this, put them in place, and then go ahead and add some fasteners just as additional uh an additional way to keep them secured to this. And then uh, these have been added, the corners have been added, and I pounded them all out, and I pounded the top all out, you can see that. So it's distressed all the way around as well. So once I get everything on, I'm going to go ahead and go over it with my brown distress, distress crayon in just some of the edges and areas to kind of uh, make it just a little bit distressed. Before. This is still drawing just a little bit, um, but it is ready enough that I can show you that I have it completely glued together and have added the uh, distress crayon to it and the way that I did that I just took and scribbled it onto my mat here sprayed it with a little water I took a blending brush went in and then I just blended over it it was nice and dark and all over it got it nice and dark and down in all the crevices and then I took an inky binky or you can take a paper towel or something like that wipe over it if it's not coming off well enough, you can uh, spritz the paper towel lightly and get it a little bit damp and then wipe off any excess so that it just goes down in the crevices. All I have to do is attach my transparents, transparent things in here, and I will be doing that. I think I'm going to use the red tape. I have some right here. The red line tape from Simon Says Stamp, and this is quarter inch, so that'll be great. So I'm just going to use the red line tape. I'm going to put it all the way around the frame on the inside, and then I will lay the piece in on it and then Now you can see that it is not that difficult to make this 
a little bit time consuming and it will probably go a little faster for you than it did for me because if you use this at the right time, the texture hammer at the right time, then you won't have the problems that I did kind of going back and trying to do it out of sequence. So uh, I really think this is a fun lantern. It's very difficult to show uh, this way, but it's a really fun lantern when you have it sitting on a bookcase or something like that. It just brings a little beautiful light. I think it would be lovely sitting um, by a you know your bed at night as a little night light or you know in the middle of a coffee table uh, in the evening. So just such beautiful transparent things and you know my whole goal was just to showcase how beautiful they are and then I got all caught up in the fun of texturizing everything from chipboard to wood and even etc trim and the brads the new large brads so I hope that you enjoyed this quick video on how to make your own lantern out of Tim Holtz ideology if you have any questions or if I wasn't completely clear about anything, please contact me through my blog at playswellwithpaper.blogspot.com. I will be glad to answer your email as quickly as possible and try and answer any questions that you might have. I want to thank you so much for following along with the tutorial today and I want to wish you a very creative day. Mm -hmm.